Good morning. Welcome to the uh, Olympia Church of Christ worship service. Um, as a reminder, uh, this service is being live streamed on uh, several um, applications and uh, you can also sit in your car if you choose and listen to it on the radio. Uh, Search, Church of Christ sponsored Search TV program uh, continues on uh, several channels and uh, on the internet as well. Our Sunday morning classes are at 9.30 this morning. Vincent's continuing with the Book of Judges. It's a good class, a good class, and a lot of folks this morning. Uh, the Sunday youth class uh, being taught by G. Wu also at 9.30. Better Than One is the title. And Wednesday adult teen class is 6.30. Uh, I think that's at 7, isn't it? I think, I think the time got changed to 7 p.m. and not 6.30. Jiwu is teaching Romans. Uh, see the e-bulletin link for each of the above classes. Um, based on the governor's order, there won't be any congregational singing. Uh, we will read Psalms 27, 1 through 5 together, and we'll play the songs and uh, all that there. Uh, Three-minute Thursday devotionals being provided by Don and Jiwoo. Uh, see the videos on Facebook each week. Um, Mission Sunday is January 17th. Please read the mission's attachment to this week's bulletin. Plan to fill it out, mail it in, or bring your pledge cards for that date. And if you cannot print, it, print if you cannot print out the card, call Vonnie and she'll have she'll mail one to you. Um, our scripture reading is uh, from Luke chapter five, verses one through eleven. What happened? that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, and he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake. But the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little distance from the land. And he sat down and continued teaching the crowds from the boat. Now when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon responded and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. And when they had done this, they had caught a great quantity of fish, and their nets began to tear. So they signaled to their partners on the, in the other boat to come out and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats to the point that they were sinking. But when Simon Peter saw this, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish they had taken. And likewise also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear, from now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to assemble. We pray this worship service pleases you and encourages each and every one of us. Help us, Lord, to always learn and grow in your word and to continue to share your word with others around us. We pray for those that uh, need uh, uh, your care, your guidance, your strength. Um, pray for each and every one of us to continue as you would have us go. And uh, we again thank you for your son, Jesus. 
It's in His name we pray these things. Amen. And now we're going to read together Psalms 27, verses 1 through 5. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is the defense of my life. Whom should I dread? When evildoers came upon me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. If an army encamps against me, my heart will not fear. If war arises against me, in spite of this, I am confident. One thing I have asked from the Lord that I shall seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. For one, on the day of trouble, he will conceal me in his tabernacle. He will hide me in the secret place of his tent. He will lift me up on a rock. Good morning. morning. To prepare our hearts for the Lord's Supper, I'm going to read from Romans chapter 5. I always love to read Romans chapter 5 when I'm getting prepared for the Lord's Supper. It kind of gets me in the mindset for what God has done for me. But before this, I want to do something a little bit different. I'm going to ask a question, and I want you all to yell out the answer to me. And it's, it's based on a song that we sing all the time, so the answer is going to be easy. What can wash away my sin? What can make me whole again? For my pardon, this I see. For my cleansing, this my plea. Nothing can for sin atone. Not of good that I have done. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Hopefully saying these words together has brought us 
a little bit closer together during this communion meditation. So let's read Romans chapter 5. I'm going to start in verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we exult in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance. Perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. One will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his love toward us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. For while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Much more, having been reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only this, but we also exalt in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have received the reconciliation. <clears throat> so we take this opportunity to remember the one that was righteous and he died in our place. We're gonna take this bread which represents his body that was freely given for us so that we can have the right to eternal life. Let's pray for the bread. Father, as we contemplate the love you have for us, we wanna take this moment to remember the sacrifice that was made for us. We remember the body of your precious son that was freely given for us. Father, as we take this bread, we pray that you'll help us to truly remember the love that was shown, the sacrifice that was made, and help us to take this in a manner which is pleasing, acceptable in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. continue our prayer for the cup. Father God, for this cup, which is the blood that was shed for us, we're grateful and we're thankful for the love that was shown. Father, we pray that as we take this cup that you'll bless us as we do it, help us to do it in a manner pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. So as a reminder, we still do have the work of the church that we're participating in, various missions and various expenses to keep the um, local congregation going. So we do have the opportunity to give. Um, if you have not already, we do have the box in the back of the auditorium. You can put your offering in there. Or for those who are watching um, via Facebook Live, you can do it. Um, go to the church website and there's an option to donate on there, or you can always come and uh, deliver your um, contribution to the church office throughout the week. Let's pray for the offering. Father God, for this opportunity to give back just a portion of what you blessed us with, we're grateful. We're grateful that you'll use the little things that we have to offer you in mighty ways. And Father, we pray as we prepare our hearts to give, that you'll help us to do this out of the abundance of our love for you and not because we're required or not because of necessity, but Father, we want to share your word with others. Help this, these, these funds to be used to spread your word and spread your love throughout this world. In Jesus' name, amen.
Good morning. Good morning. So we are continuing our series looking at its network as we are fishers of men. And so the sermon title for this morning is Fishing Like Jesus. How many times have you gone fishing? So what's the biggest fish you ever caught? So I did want to ask Bill Fox, how actually big was the fish that got away? As we said last week, John the Baptist was arrested and Jesus went to live in the land of Capernaum on the lake shore of Galilee. This is in the territory of Zebulun and Naphtali. And so if you look there, that's actually the a view from uh, the Sea of Galilee or the Lake of Galilee into Capernaum where Jesus would have been residing along with Peter and his mother-in-law and several other of the apostles are living in that area. And so Jesus did some of his finest work in a boat and on the shore or in a boat on the lake. So when we, hmm. oh, could you advance one slide in? I'm not sure it's not let me. Okay. So Jesus did some of his finest work from a boat. And in 1986, there was a drought in the Lake of Galilee. A first century fishing boat was located right there north of the city of Magdala. This boat was found in the mud, buried in, and actually in really good condition. And it was carbon dated to approximately 5 BC. And so it's really fascinating as they, they explored this boat and, and looked at the details of it. And it ended up being approximately 27 feet long, eight feet wide and five to six feet tall and would have been really similar to the fishing boats, if not a fishing boat of that time and day, there in the Sea of Galilee. So do we know someone who was walking around and, and in boats at that time? Another interesting fact, just when I made reference to Magdala, do we know someone who was from Magdala? Mary Magdalene. That's where she came her surname from. So, just, it intrigues me coming kind of face to face with these details that bring these texts to life to me. So Peter caught fish. And Jesus caught Peter in just such a boat. And it just makes me think how real the life and scriptures we we find are about how Jesus truly did these things and he was there and this was a place that we can go walk the shore of the Sea of Galilee. We can see what Capernaum would have looked like and uh, there's a text in a little bit that gives even more detail about him going out into the water a little ways from a boat and then speaking to the crowds which I was intrigued by but so how does P Peter get captured by Jesus in a boat and later be called to be a fisher of men? Let's start in our text in Luke 5, 1 through 11. We're going to look at a few scriptures there. Verse 4 says, And when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out it in the deep and let, your net, let down your nets for a catch. And then in verse 6, And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish, and their nets were breaking. Then in verse 8, But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. And then in verse 10, it says, And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. I am excited about studying and preparing for these lessons because I know that I'm not spending enough time fishing for men. 
I just, it's so easy to get wrapped up in my everyday life and my schedule and my routines and, and not make sharing the good news of the gospel a priority. And so as I'm looking at Jesus calling these apostles to be fishers of men, it reminds me how much I have that calling. Jesus teaches us how to fish for the kingdom. For somebody, it's a matter of life and death that we fish like Jesus. Do you know who that is? I don't, but I need to make the most of every opportunity, don't I? Think about that. For you to share the gospel for, to someone, it could be a matter of their life and death. Life that they can find that would be eternity in heaven with God. Or death, which would be an alternative none of us want. The consequence for our sins. Notice a few things I want to highlight about how Jesus fished. Jesus goes where the fish are. Most of Jesus' ministry took place on the north shore of the Lake of Galilee, or the Sea of Galilee, which I have there in the picture on the screen. He lived in Capernaum. He ministered there and in the surrounding towns. But notice in our text, Jesus gets into Peter's boat. Most of the shore is a cliff drop off into the Lake of Galilee, or the Sea of Galilee. However, there's this section here, just off of Capernaum, where, I don't know if you can see the boat right up. There. So, that boat has a person speaking. And the people way up here on the shore can hear it as if he's got a microphone. Because it makes a natural amphitheater in this section or this valley here. And so if you, this is actually from YouTube. And if you go on YouTube Amphitheater, you hear that guy talking and he's reading the Sermon on the Mount. And as he's there in the boat, you hear him clear as day where these people are sitting on the rocks. Isn't that fascinating? So honestly, if you just go on YouTube and look at Lake of Galilee or Sea of Galilee Amphitheater, this pops up and you can play that video. But in Bethsaida, there are also several other similar areas. But Jesus spent time with the people that mattered the most to him, which were those who were lost and those who were going to be sharing with the lost. Jesus did not just spend his time in the synagogue or in the church building. He mixes with the lost because they need a savior. Now, the teachers of that day would go to the synagogue and they would stand and all their students were to come and kneel or sit around them and learn from them. Is that how Jesus taught? He did go to the synagogues at times, but he was truly out with the people, taking care of their immediate needs. It says in Matthew 9, 36, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. My plea is that we need to follow Jesus' example. We need to spend time with those who need a Savior. We need to let them know the good news that's available. We don't need to put ourselves at risk in losing our salvation by condoning what the world does as sin. But we need to be there to be an example for them and to share with them. Many ministers and leaders of the church, we aren't in the world enough. We aren't out there sharing enough. Because it's uncomfortable. Things get dirty. We need more friends that don't know Jesus so we can model Jesus to them, don't we? Either you love people enough to share the message with them or you don't. 
Jesus loved fish. It's that simple. He loved the lost and wanted to share the message with them. And he wanted his disciples to take that call seriously and become the fishers of men he called them to be. People are not projects. They're lost souls that need Jesus. I want to be an evangelist, but I know I don't do it as much as I should. Because it's easy to get wrapped up in life. There are at least four callings of Peter in the Gospels. Why? Because Jesus knew Peter would be a fisher of men. He called him over and over again. Matthew 4, 18 through 20. Mark 3, 13 through 16. Luke 5, 1 through 11. And John 1, 35 through 42. Are all different times Jesus called Peter to do ministry. To evangelize. To teach people. To fish for men. Jesus loves Peter enough to call him over and over again. He decided, Peter, I'm coming after you. He loved him and he knew his mission was to take the gospel to the world. Remember this, no one is beyond the power of the gospels, no matter who it is. Peter would not have been my candidate, how about you? I mean, he was brash, he was quick to speak, he was quick to act, sometimes getting himself in trouble. He, at times, was arrogant. He was jealous. And I could go on and on. But Jesus saw something in Peter that most people wouldn't have. And the people we're around, we need to see they have potential for the gospel to make a difference in their life. No matter who they are or what they've done. Jesus offers the only thing that matters, faith in Christ. In our text, in Luke chapter 5, 4, it said, When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. Jesus knew what was going to happen. But how did Peter respond? Jesus calls Peter to trust him, regardless of how much Peter thinks he knows. And who was the professional fisherman? Peter. And he said, Jesus, we labored all night long. It's not going to be worth it to put our nets back in the water. And what happened? This is because Jesus' way is far better than ours. Luke 5, 6-7. And when they had done this, they enclosed a large number of fish. And their nets were breaking they then signaled for their partners in the other boat to come and help them. They came and filled both of the boats. So they began to sink. They were so full of the catch. Peter, when this happened, did what? It says he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Do you know this is the only time we come across one of the apostles repenting? We don't find it in text. But Peter knew what he didn't know at that point, didn't he? Some of us may need to do that when it comes to sharing with the lost in our world and in our lives. Because some of us have given up the ghost on some of them. We've just decided they won't listen. There's nothing I can say that will make them choose Christianity over the life they live. But God is more powerful than we can even imagine, isn't he? And it's his news that we're sharing. And people can choose to do with it what they want, but we can't not share. Repentance is the reverse side of faith. This is the one and only time we have one of the apostles repent in the text we need to call people to repent from doing life their way and to trust in a life lived Christ's way that's the message we've got to share with the world this is true in every area 
what America has been doing the past 20 years is not working. We need to show that there's another way. Don't listen to the press or our government to determine what direction we as Christians should be going. We need to listen to our God. And it's his message we've got to share. When it comes to priorities and loyalties, what we love, who's in charge, how we spend our time, that needs to be example to the world we live in. Relationships, husbands and wives, friends. Our world has messed up in relationships, haven't they? And they've chosen very unhealthy relationships. And we need to be the ones who show what is good and right and what we find in Scripture for God's plan for relationships. Work and money, our ethics, our honesty, our faithfulness, our generosity. We need to show that there's a different way than the norm of our world and society when it comes to work and money. Sexuality, purity, marital commitment, faithfulness. The sexual revolution has destroyed so much of our country and sin is running rampant and people's attitude is who can tell me what's right and wrong? I can say God can tell me what's right and wrong and that's going to determine what my choices are and what I determine is moral and right and what's not. Time Service, ministry, recreation, entertainment. Do they reflect God in our lives? Or are we more focused on just our own selfishness? And then community, church, one another, the poor and the hurting. We have got to be examples to the world. And if we're not in the world, they're not going to see God in his ways, according to scripture, are they? We need the gospel. The world needs the gospel. In Luke 9, 23 through 25, it said, He said to all, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself. I hope you're thinking about how Jesus made people and their salvation a priority. Because as his church, as Christians, we have got to do the same. Don't underestimate the power of Jesus to change a sinner's life. Why do we know anything about Peter? Think about it. This obscure fisherman on the Sea of Galilee. Why do we know anything about him? Because Jesus changed him. Jesus helped him to become the man he be did become by commissioning him, by challenging him, by teaching him. We have no idea the power of the gospel on a life. But we have to not let our own vision of someone accepting or rejecting the gospel regulate who and what we share. You see, Jesus trains fish to fish for other fish. Did you realize that? In verses 9 through 11, he says, For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish they'd taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, partners of Simon. Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. And then verse 11, And when they had brought their boats to the end, they left everything and followed him. Either you love people or you don't. Either you want what's best for people or you don't. John 3.16 shows how much God loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. 
that whoever believes in him should not perish, but should have eternal life. Christian life doesn't stop at mere programs, doctrines, or rituals. It's the living faith that's intended to be spread. So why aren't most people bringing up Christ? Honestly, why aren't most people sharing this good news we have? We might doubt Jesus' power. We might not feel any difference between being lost and being saved. We've just kind of made it all the same. We might be too absorbed in our own lives. That's scary, isn't it? We just don't love the loss because we're more worried about our own comfort. And we might not have been challenged by our church. I hope we after this lesson you can't say that. Because I really want to challenge you to be out there sharing God's message. So here's our challenge. Told you I'd do it. Take a piece of paper, whether you're at home, whether it's your car, whether you're here. Take a piece of paper and write down three names of people you know who appear to be separated from God. Have you done that yet? Okay, I, I challenge you to do that. Write three names of people that you know that are separated from God. And then commit to praying for them every day for the next two months. Ask God for opportunities to talk to them spiritually. Sharing God's message. Sharing what a difference it's made in your life. And what a difference it can make in theirs. And remember this. Oh, I forgot I could have had those up there while I was reading. And remember this. Fishing is a matter of life and death for someone you know. It might be for one of those three names you put down. It's a matter of life and death. That usually motivates us, doesn't it? If we think my actions could impact someone's life or death, that usually spurs us to action, doesn't it? If it's a medical emergency, what do we do? Somebody yells, call 911. Or we go to see if there's something we can physically do to help the situation. But have we let the lost become callous? I mean, have we just decided, you know what, they're, they're going to choose that way of life, so why should it bother me? Larry Smith, I don't know why I put Larry Miller, it's Larry Smith, he was a drug dealer and a felon. He was in prison and was taught the gospel of Christ by a prison minister. But you know, he struggled. He couldn't accept salvation for a long time because he knew he didn't deserve it. And that was an obstacle he had to get beyond. As he thought of all the horrible things I've done, the lives I've taken, the lives I've destroyed by my actions, I don't deserve Christ's love and sacrifice. But finally, after he did accept it, would you applaud that I told you he's baptized five people since his release from prison? Would you applaud if I told you he's baptized ten people since his release? What about fifty? What about a hundred since his release from prison? He's baptized 120 souls because he could not not share the gospel. Even though it was such a struggle for him to accept that this was a gift he could receive because he was unworthy. He just didn't feel like he could accept it. Now that he did accept it, he had to share it with everyone. And most of the people he shared it with were, guess what? Prostitutes, drug dealers, felons, people who we would easily write off. 
but he knew their need for a savior. And my challenge is, do you see that today? Are you willing to share? Jesus, like any good fisherman, first catches the fish, and then he cleans them, according to Mark Potter. Will you make this the year that you discover the joy of bringing someone, or 120 someones, to Christ? As, are you going to do this challenge? Are you going to accept that you have this message to share? And it takes all of us. What father among you, if his son asks for fish, will instead give him a serpent? Luke 11, 11. We have people that need a savior. And I want to challenge you to share that message. Share what we have received. But if you're here and you have not received that message, I want to offer that opportunity. We have this baptismal area available where you could have your sins washed away and you could come out of that watery grave, a new person in him. A fish that was meant to fish for other fish. But also if you need the prayers of this congregation at all, we ask you to respond as we now stand and have the song overhead. Consider it and, and be able to print that off and mail it in. Morning. Uh, so above me, you have the prayer requests for this week. Um, for health, we have Alicia Brooks and Thomas Burton, Shirley Burton. Harold Carr Jr., uh, Dennis Kraft, um, he's hospitalized at St. Peter's. Uh, Clarence Kearns, uh, Glenn Paulson, Susan Richardson, Diane Sherman, Deborah West, uh, Joyce Whitaker, and June Zeiser. And then for friends and family's health, uh, we have April, uh, who is Beverly Artemika's friend, recovering from a procedure. Um, Shirley Bowles, uh, Brenda's uh, aunt, who's hospitalized in Montana due to a broken ankle. Uh, Tricia Claridge, a uh, family member of the Thomp Thompsons dealing with cancer. Uh, Sarah Su uh, Cushman, who is the niece of uh, the Paulsons. Karen Frazier, who is Bonnie's cousin, who's dealing with breast cancer. Armando 
uh, Horta, who is Vincent's brother, is also dealing with cancer and his cancer has spread. Um, Jean Nutt, um, who is Kelly Lester's grandmother. Uh, Linda Pride, Bruce Thompson's sister, uh, dealing with dementia. Opalit's uh, son, uh, who is dealing with cancer. Jerry Williams Jr., Jerry and Connie Williams' son, who is recovering at home and also Alice Yarber. And then for spiritual guidance, we have Reggie Burton, Sarah Cushman, niece of the Paulsons, Lana Paulson, Lori Scott, Connie Williams, um, those who have lost loved ones, uh, congregations worldwide, teachers and students, COVID victims, all of our soldiers who are in harm's way and our church leaders and our government leaders. And then for travel, we have Karis and Steve, uh, Phyllis Duncan's daughter and son-in-law. And we have for Thanksgiving, uh, Daryl Walker, uh, Connie Williams' brother recovering from COVID. And for bereavement, the family of Mike Wilcox, Bonnie's friend, who passed away Monday. If you'll, if you'll bow with me, please. Dear Lord, we want to thank you so much for this day and the, and the lesson that we received uh, today from um don and may we take it to our heart and uh become uh better uh fishermen for you dear lord and, and bring the loss to you to you do dear lord to to help them with the needs that they have dear lord and just be with the, pe the people that we have mentioned today both spiritually and physically that that you can be with them and heal them from whatever um, spiritual and health issues that they're dealing with, dear Lord, and be with us this week that we can be fishers of men and and bring the loss to you, and have a good and healthy week, um, and doing whatever tasks that we have to accomplish, dear Lord. And we just want to pray all these things through your Son Jesus' name, Amen.